happy Friday, everybody. Um, I hope everyone has had a great week. Um, today, I, I, I wanted to talk to you about reaching that, you know, success as a freight broker. And your level of success may differ from somebody else's, right? Um, your goals as a freight broker may differ from somebody else's, right? From one broker to another. Uh, and this goes for freight agents as well. Um, actually, for anybody in this in the industry, you might even be a carrier, right? Um, an owner operator, a small fleet owner, you know, your level of success will differ from someone else in the industry. But one thing that I've noticed, and I was up uh, the other night and I came across um, another channel's uh, short and they were talking about, and, and this was really kind of a, a, a great point, is that, you know, reaching success as a, as a freight broker, you know, 50% of that comes from your customer. The other 50% comes from your carriers, right? Um, and what I, I believe they were trying to uh, relay in that message was, you know, networking, building relationships, but they more or less got attacked by carriers um and you know a lot of the responses were you know oh you're taking 50 percent from the carriers you know all these cheap brokers blah, blah 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 like all this and that but that was not what they were saying at all so we too often times i i i see posts reply to posts uh you know comments on videos uh, and, and things uh even some of the other channels here on youtube they're like fear mongering right you know all oh, brokers are taking 90 percent of the line hole you know, get them out of here you know what i mean i'm sure it's great for views for everybody else going they're doing what you know come on i mean be realistic i mean if you take two seconds to look at the data I think, uh, what was it, uh, some of the most recent data, well, not recent, but within the last year, uh, the average uh, broker's profit margin on dry van freight was like 14%, right? So it, it's, it's, it's really kind of almost humorous uh, to see some of the replies, the responses, uh, some of the videos, uh, you know, it, they're, they're really doing more to hurt you and the industry th than anything. Oh, they act like they're your buddy. They act like they're putting out content that is going to, uh, you know, help you grow and succeed and, and get you in the know, right? They have some secret information about, you know, about whatever topic that they're talking about, you know, and everybody jumps on the bandwagon. And this is where the problem lies because we listen to respond. We don't listen to learn. Okay. On this channel, I have provided you with, you know, anybody who watches with tools and services that I believe in, that I use, that will help you on your path to success. Right whether you're a carrier or a broker and you need factoring, one of the best factoring companies out there, in my humble opinion, is Operify. They have a lot of great stuff going on over there. Uh, the fuel card, right? Tank payments. Uh, they have a network of vendors. So if you need insurance or anything like that, right? Like they have, they have a network that they've put in place and built for you right if you're former law enforcement a veteran you know things like this they provide you with discounts they have tiered rates based on uh you know your situation your you know the volume of loads there are no minimums there are no ridiculous contracts like you see with some of the other um factoring companies right um, and this is one of the reasons, you know, that's one of the many reasons and, there, and there's a lot more, right? But I'm not, this isn't a, a video about factoring, but it's just, it's one of those things where 
they are providing so much value to you, right? Because factoring is factoring, right? Nobody's really trying to reinvent the wheel, uh, you know, but it, it, it's what they do and what they're providing for you for that percentage that they take, right? That is going to help you on your path to success. Not to mention that uh, everybody there, or at least nearly everybody there, has been in the industry as a carrier, as a broker, or both, right? They have real industry working knowledge, okay? Um, E-carrier check, all right? That's another one. That's a great place to source carriers, to find shippers, to help you grow and build your network. Nate and Jared over there, like I, I, I've said, go check out their channel. A uh, lot of great information over there. They do live cold calls. I mean, phenomenal, phenomenal content, right? Um, and eCare Check is just, it, it's an invaluable resource. It pays for itself on practically day one, right? Uh, DAT. Now, this is part of the reason why I'm talking about some of these tools and services. Now, I did a post in the Facebook group uh, the other day about asking about people's preferred load board and why, right? Um, there's probably cons and uh, pros and cons to, to either one. Um, my preferred is DAT uh, for numerous reasons, including the type of freight that I typically move, right? Do I have subscriptions to both? Yes, but um, I prefer DAT. One of the reasons why I prefer DAT and something that I've noticed, because a lot of my freight, uh, for those of you that may be new to the channel, a lot of my freight I move primarily dedicated, right? I, I use the same carriers, same loads, same everything. So I don't move a ton of spot freight, okay? But one thing that I have noticed is, especially more here recently, I had a couple of uh, dry band loads, uh, was the the current market rate difference between DAT and truck stop was anywhere from $800 to $1,200 difference on each lane, right? DAT was $1,200 more on, on one of the lanes and uh, DAT was higher on uh, by $800 on the other lane. So, uh, and I noticed that that market rate was updating more frequently than it was on truck stop okay so this is something to consider when you're picking out a load board right um the ease of use right um i i, I find truck stop maybe to be a little bit cumbersome it might just be me um but i i'm just i'm, I'm not an overly big fan of it okay um is it useful sure um but again, not a big fan. And for anybody who doesn't believe me or wants to check it out, link in the description, save you 10%. Okay. Um, so getting back to, you know, building success or, you know, finding success as a freight broker. Um, you know, I've talked to a lot of people who have been in the industry for a long time, you know, besides just myself, get their opinion and, and, there seems to be some commonalities in a lot of that and that is you know networking building relationships right um you know obviously i've talked about how you know uh sales is a is a large part of what we do well it's not just selling your services right you're selling yourself you're building your network you're building your relationships right and you will find that over time having those that network and those relationships is going to help you with your long-term success okay it doesn't happen overnight that's one of the reasons why we have the channel why we have the facebook group especially the facebook group uh because it's a place for everybody to kind of connect grow right um i've seen a lot of people connect um, on there. It's not a, uh, really a place to post loads or anything, which if you're not already a member of the group, quick side note, please answer the membership questions. Too often times I get 
uh, people that request memberships that probably would be a, a great fit for the group, um, but you don't answer the questions. Um, and at a certain point in time, I end up declining it, you know, and I guess hopefully they'll uh, join, right? They'll, they'll re-request and fill out the questions. Um, there's a reason for the questions. It's just not an automatic approval. If you think you're going to sidestep it, you're not. The whole reason why we have those in place is to uh, kind of weed out all non-hackers, right? All the spammers and things. Um, you'd be surprised some of the some of the membership requests that I get, and it's just absolutely absurd. Uh, and, and it would just end up it would be a disease upon the group, right? So um, I want to keep it friendly, focused. Uh, like I said, a great place for everybody to network and grow together. Uh, to learn from one another, uh, which that's another part of you finding your success as a freight broker. Um, it can be kind of difficult at times to keep up on all the industry news and uh, changes in regulations and mandates and, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But try to keep your finger on the pulse of things um, as much as possible, right? Um, if you're starting out at, with... Uh, no prior experience um and you're watching this right now and you've gone out and you've got your authority you are not going to find loads off the load board as a freight broker right you have to go out and get your own customers okay um i don't know where that rumor came into play um that brokers are able to just get loads off of a load board that's what they are and 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 that's how you find loads and get customer it, it's not Right. Can you find customers through through load boards? Sure. You know, you can go through the directory. Uh, you can search a lot of listings, but it's very tedious, right, to find shippers that are listing their own freight on there. Um, and nine times out of ten, if they're doing it, you know, they, they're either not taking on any uh, brokers or they've got about a hundred other brokers that they're working with, right? And they're just beating that, that rate to the bottom, right? Market rate says 23, they're, they want to get it for 18. Um, you know, don't, don't let that absorb your day, your time. Um, I've dropped customers that, you know, uh, even that I did not anticipate that that was how it was going to go, but Unfortunately, you know, that was never brought up during the conversation. They pretty much denied it. You know, oh, no, we only work with select brokers. Well, yeah, like a thousand other select brokers, right? You know, uh, that's all they're doing is trying to get everybody to beat each other up. Um, you're going to end up taking 80 phone calls trying to book that load and make $15 or $10, right? It's, it's not worth your time. Um, and those are the type of shippers to avoid. Um, I've also had shippers uh, over the years that we have really great relationships um, and there was eventually a change in management and they wanted to onboard anybody and everybody and it just it turned into a big cluster you know what um, so uh, and some are just cheap outright um, some are very fair uh, they understand you know and and see the value in what you do and the relationships that you bring um you know and this is why like from and, and i'm speaking strictly for myself right now um and i'm sure there's others of you out there if you're a seasoned freight broker um that i've got customers that literally will just send me a text or an email or something and say hey i need a truck today or tomorrow or you know next wednesday can you get that covered for me boom usually inside of three to five minutes, I'm letting them know, yep, done. And that's because I call one of my partner carriers that I use on the regular and say, hey, I've got this load available. Are you, you know, are you, are you available? Yep. You know, um, I take care of them. They take care of me. The customer's happy. Everybody's happy. Um, over the course of these videos, you've talked, you've heard me talk about, you know, I, I, I try to think of it as a, a happy three-way marriage right and I, I know that may sound bad as a, a terminology or something but you know it's uh that re that relationship between you and your carrier and you and your customer 
right? Uh, the happier your customer is, um, the more reliable you are, uh, your customer is going to end up giving you uh, some of their better freight, right? They'll end up giving you more freight, which in turn helps out your partner carriers, right? Your partner carriers will find value in you and what you bring to them, right? Because you're relying on them as well, right? And this was another point in that videos, and, and I've said this before, is like the, the load board can be a very dangerous place to play, all right? Um, you don't always know who you're getting. Um, there's a lot of uh, programs out there, you know, systems that kind of give us, you know, vetting software that gives us some pretty good insight on on a particular carrier, um, but it doesn't paint the, entirely the whole picture. I'd say probably, you know, 85, 90% uh, of, of the picture of that carrier is what we can see. Um, you know, obviously you could have, they could have a bad driver, right? Um, you know, and it's really kind of no fault of that carrier. Uh, they just hired poorly, right? And you could end up, your customer could have a bad experience. They'll have a bad experience. You have a bad experience, right? Um, and so this again is why all of my carriers, if they're under load for me, they have my cell phone number. If something happens, they call me in the middle of the night right i would rather know about it and give them not only the peace of mind that hey i'm here and i'm if you're working i'm working right we're going to take care of this together whatever the situation is or it might be something that i can't help out with you know it might be a mechanical issue or something but i've got to update the receiver the shipper you know whatever um i i it's my opinion that carriers should not have to wait till you roll in at 8 a.m it's my opinion that carriers should not have to call or even a customer to call a uh, outsourced call center that cannot help you or any after hours call center that can't do anything for them, right? They can put a note down, but they're really, they're not providing any solutions. They're not solving any problems. Um, I don't know. Uh, Maybe, maybe you disagree with me on that one. Maybe, you know, after hours, there's more value to it than what I see. Um, or even outsourced call centers, you know, for things. Um, I deal with a lot of outside call centers and, and things, whether it's IT department and whether it's, you know, and I absolutely loathe it because literally I can call three people with a problem and they'll all start to tell me the exact same thing. It's like almost like they're reading from a script. And it's like, no, you're not listening to me, right? You're listening to respond. You're not listening to learn what my problem is, right? You're not providing any kind of a solution. You're not solving my problem. I'm not, I'm not an IT guy, right? That's why I'm calling you. So uh, basically build your foundation, right? Network, build your relationships, get some industry knowledge, right? If whatever whatever niche you're in or niche, however you want to pronounce that, become the best in that niche that you possibly can be. That's going to come across in your sales, like I've said before, that it's going to behoove you. And it might start off if you're, you know, if you're day one or in your first couple of months or your first year, uh, you might not see like overnight success like some of these commercials or, or websites will tell you, you know. Um, I'm just trying to be a realist. I'm not trying to, you know, be negative or anything, but just some of the things that you need to be aware of. Okay. So, um, I hope everybody has a great weekend. I hope you found this helpful. Um, we do have a special guest coming on. What did I say in the last video? Is it a 17th? I have, I have to go back through my notes here. I know I'm a, I'm a, uh, pen to paper kind of a, uh, guys, so yeah, 17th at 4 p.m. We have a special guest coming on. I think that everybody's going to enjoy it. Um, I, I really love talking with this gentleman. Uh, a lot of great insight, a lot of great knowledge, uh, very motivational. Um, so I hope that you'll all be here. Um, and as we get closer to that date, I will uh, um, have that prepped so that 
you know you can set a reminder for it don't forget to like share subscribe join the facebook group uh if you're looking to build your network and grow um you know and you really want to find success rather than beating your head against the wall right um if you're being discouraged right now because we're kind of at a time of year where uh some shippers are not taking on um brokers or partner carriers you know just yet they might some are already some were last month some won't till january february sometimes even march um typically it's january though so make sure you have a good crm if you're on a budget i recommend hubspot right i don't have a link in the description for them but you can look them up it's a free crm uh you know if you're if your tms doesn't currently you you know have a, a CF, crm built into it uh set your reminders you know obviously your email can set reminders a lot of those will set you know calendar date reminders for you uh to, to reach back out to them you know um i've got several myself but we're still adding customers right we're still adding customers you just have to be diligent don't get discouraged uh you know if you get a no um you know, in fact, the, the gentleman that's going to be on on the 17th, we were actually talking about this. You know, there, I, I've had calls in the past where, you know, it might be a Monday morning and I call them and, hey, this is Tim, you know, and I, you know, ah, I'm not interested. Boom. You know, and I, I barely got my name out and they just hung up on me. Right. And I waited, you know, four or five days a week, week and a half, you know, and I called them back. The response was completely different. You know, uh, Maybe they spill coffee on themselves on their way to work or something. You know what I mean? Uh, they got in an argument with their spouse or, you know, maybe they got a ticket on the way to work or something. You know what I mean? Like it, anything can happen. It put them in a bad mood. Maybe they walked into a big, you know what, show uh, and, and their, their whole day is just going to be fraught with problems. Right. And so don't let that no discourage you. Right. I hear no everybody hears no okay just stay diligent just you for every no you're going to get closer to a yes right so if you need help on that i have other videos on how to find and source uh shippers again and it you know i would say get e care check a lot of great information uh you know there's contact information linkedin profiles to, to you know the person that you need to speak with a lot of great information what you know the size of the shipper they are whether they're small mega medium large uh so depending upon whether you're looking for volume freight or you know that type of a thing uh that just so much information in there i really need to have nate and jared back on um on the show to kind of go over that again but uh anywho uh i'll go ahead and shut this down for now i hope everybody has a great weekend um stay positive and until next time, be kind to one another. Bye-bye.